last year the cabin was haunted. It was a terrifying and illuminating experience, and as I've had a few requests to go over it again, and as it is now almost the one year anniversary of it all happening, I figured it was about time to just talk about what happened. So in this video, I'll share what happened, what I believe caused it, and what I was able to do to finally get rid of it. Now, before we begin, I think it's important to set a little bit of a background understanding. I was in the process of slowly moving back to the cabin. I didn't have nearly any of my tools or ingredients, but was just starting to get back there. Baseline, the cabin is a very active place in general, and it was this time of year, which is also an active time. And on top of all of this, I was more stressed than usual, very busy and consumed by a lot of things that were pulling me many different directions. So all in all, very primed for this to happen. So with that awareness of the background, let's start from the beginning. It started with nightmares. Terrifying and unusual nightmares that were unlike any I had ever had and any that I would even normally have. And then following this, one of the rooms in the house began to feel increasingly hostile and unsettling. You'd cross the threshold into that room and every hair on the back of your neck would stand on end and it felt like there were eyes watching you. After a few days of the nightmares and the fear felt in that room kind of growing and getting worse, I mentioned to my then girlfriend who had been living at the house with me that I had been having these horrible nightmares and perhaps scarier still beyond the terror felt in that room and these awful nightmares. She said that she was having terrible nightmares as well and when we opened the discussion about this, we realized that our nightmares were following the exact same theme. Now, I don't know about you, but I typically don't experience uh, nightmares that are in line with the people that I live with that continue for days. I find that to be pretty unusual. <laughs> And it was at this point that I realized something was really off, but I didn't really know what that something was. But I decided then and there that I absolutely was not going to talk any more about this in the house because I didn't want whatever was in there to have awareness that I had awareness of it. So after a day or two, I had left the house with my partner and that's when I said, something is off. <laughs> I think that there is something in the house that shouldn't be there. And she agreed with me and she was a skeptic. And so that really cemented that something was going on that was really freaky in my mind, but I didn't know what to do at this point. And I didn't realize how much it would get worse. I think I kind of thought I had a little more time to deal with it or that I just was gonna ignore it and figure out a few things to keep it away from me. I think we made kind of an unconscious agreement not to uh, be in the house alone anymore and just uh, be a little more aware of things happening and what felt weird. I think a lot of this was just because we were scared, but uh, ultimately I'm glad that we made these decisions or unconscious agreements. I think this went on for a day or two more before it started to get kind of unbearable to be in that room. I would not walk in there alone. Hazel, my dog, who was an only child at the time, refused to go in there as well. And it just felt so off and so scary. And so one of the days when I was out walking on the beach and catching up with my mom, I mentioned to her what was going on. I asked if she had noticed anything the last time she had visited, if my grandmother had noticed anything as she had been living there for the last couple of months. Unfortunately, they didn't have any answers from their own experience, but instead my mom pushed the idea that maybe it was coming from this old piece of furniture I had just bought and brought into the home. At first I wanted to deny it, but everything started to make a lot of sense. So let's get into the story of the table or cabinet 
or a million other names that everybody else wants to call it, but I use it as a table, so I'm going to call it a table. End of story. You probably know this piece of furniture very, very well, but it only came into my possession a little over a year ago. I had been wanting to get a table for a workspace uh, to put in one of the large windows that look out on the water in the cabin. And so kind of in the back of my mind, I had been looking for a table to put in that window. But at the time I was so busy with work, I really didn't have any extra time to go look for a table and spend the time that it would take to find one that I really loved. But one day, while I was in the midst of working on something that had a very strict deadline that I had no time to step away from, I had the sudden and intense urge to go to one of the antique stores in town. And so I did. And like I said, I had no business doing this. I was on a deadline that I was really going to make just barely and uh well i didn't care which is unlike me very very unlike me and when we got to the antique store even more unlike me i went straight to this table which was tucked in a back room kind of hidden behind a bunch of things typically when i go to an antique store if you can't tell by my home i spend a lot of time looking at everything. I really love old things. I love that they've lived lives before me and I love finding things that are unique and beautiful and antique stores are often really full of those. So often I spend just a lot of time looking around and I just didn't do that. I went straight for this table. I saw it and I knew that I needed to take it home with me, which that's maybe not too unusual, but the rest surrounding it was strange. Another piece of it that was kind of weird for me is I spent more money than I would normally be comfortable spending on a piece of furniture. I am usually very frugal. Most everything I own, I bought secondhand from people selling it, mainly because they just didn't really want it anymore and I've been lucky to find a lot of beautiful pieces, but uh, I tend not to pay money that you may expect for pieces. And while I do think that this was perhaps a fair price for it, it just was not something that I would normally do. But regardless, I was completely obsessed with it. I was calling everybody I knew to show them my table. I was bringing people into the house to show them my table. It was the greatest obsession of my life and I was just so unbelievably in love with it. And I think that that obsession is why I didn't notice a lot of things or really connect the dots to this being this table or originating from it until later mentioned to me that it perhaps could have been. But looking back, it made a lot of sense. Yeah. And you were the first one to tell me. Mm-hmm. You were. Immediately after I brought it home, Hazel began to go up to the table, scratch it with her paws, and start crying and barking at it, which was very unusual for Hazel, to say the least. At first, I thought it was maybe because it was blocking a window that she loves, and so I moved it out of the window to see if maybe that helped, but it didn't. If anything, she got worse about it and continued to do this, which I really just didn't want her to scratch up my beautiful new table, but I think that she was trying to say, hey, this is funky and not okay. And I wish I had listened to her. <laughs> it was also at this time that the room that the table was in began to feel freaky. And Hazel also no longer wanted to be in the house alone, which is unusual. She would try to escape any time we left her alone and, uh, she even tried to escape when we were in the home, which is very unusual because she doesn't really like to be outside alone. And I just had never seen this behavior from her. So after my mom had mentioned that maybe it was the table, that was when I started to kind of connect the dots. All of the timing of things lined up. It made sense. It was the newest thing to the house. Nobody else had, had noticed anything prior to this table coming into the house and it just made too much sense and as much as i wanted to deny it i ultimately began to accept that maybe this was the origin point of everything so after my then girlfriend and i went on a walk outside to kind of 
make a plan, we decided to take the table out of the house, do some cleansings of the house as an experiment to see if maybe some of this intense energy was a result of me being stressed out and working too much. And I think that was, you know, just a effort to deny what was going on. But I also, at the time, did not feel very prepared to deal with something like this. I was not well versed in spirits. I had never performed a banishing on anything like this. And uh, I just didn't feel prepared for this moment. It's just not an area of study that I am particularly invested in. Well, now I am, but at the time I just didn't have a lot of experience with it. And so I ultimately was just kind of scared of messing up and didn't want to do a lot of things in case I did something that either made what was in the house angrier, uh, messed with something that I shouldn't. I just didn't know. And so a lot of my actions reflected being a little bit scared and unsure. I also didn't have most of my materials with me. I believe I had rosemary, chrysanthemums, and cinnamon sticks, and that was it for ingredients in the house. And so I did some simple cleansing, some basic things that I normally did, but the main thing we started doing was carrying around protective charms and wearing bind runes drawn on our bodies and Hazel was wearing one as well. So ultimately, and this is where I think I went wrong with a lot of these things, took the table out of the house, did a cleansing of the space, did not put protections up around the house, didn't even think about it. And the table was outside, two feet outside of the home, outside of a door. I did a simple cleansing banishing on the table, but ultimately I believe that that maybe released whatever was hanging out around it on it. And uh, it just simply went back into the home to the place that it had been in. And that's because I did not put up the protections to keep it out and it just was comfortable there. And so that was definitely a mistake on my part that I did not realize until much later. That was unfortunate. The other thing that may have happened is that we just failed to really rid it from the table because we did bring it back into the home. Though I don't think it was fully attached to the table anymore because things started to get weirder. The entire house started to feel uncomfortable. It was not just the room that the table was in. And uh, well, the nightmares stopped because I believe the protections we were wearing, they didn't stop entirely. They, they just kind of changed, I guess. Mainly because the following night I dreamed of something peering in through the door of the bedroom. Could that have been fear? Maybe. Personally, I don't really believe that it was. It was after this point that things progressively got worse. Everything started to feel more hostile, especially the room that the table was in and had been in. And it just was so awful to be in there. And this all kind of built up and got worse and worse and worse until three days after the cleansings, when I decided it was time to put my foot down and accept that this was going on and we needed to do a full-scale banishing, which we did. So on the morning of the third day, when I woke up, I walked out into the main part of the home and I had seen on one of the things we'd been doing to cleanse, that things had been moved around in a way that seemed a little bit odd. I decided to not think much of it because I figured that my then girlfriend had just done it the night prior and or sometime when I wasn't paying attention and uh, that that made the most sense because that did make the most sense. But when she woke up, she came out into the room and asked me if I did that. And that sent a chill down my spine because no, I did not do that, I thought she did that. And there was absolutely no way that Hazel did that. And that's when I decided that whatever was moving things around my house was no longer welcome in my house and was going to get out then and there. Now, before we get into the whole plan we made, how I banished this spirit, I guess we should maybe delve into what had been moved. For one of the cleansings, I had placed salt piles on plates in the corners of all the rooms. Uh, this is something I don't normally do, but it is a good way to absorb excess energy and just dump out of the house if you've got a lot of 
uncomfy feelings going on. And on this particular pile that happened to sit beneath a stool so that Hazel could not get to it, there had been a cinnamon stick placed perfectly right in the center of it. That would have been very hard to do uh, as a person without moving everything about and impossible for Hazel to have done. So the protective charms that my girlfriend and I had been wearing were made up of chrysanthemum, rosemary, and cinnamon, along with a couple of extra things that I have in general that I carry with me often. But those were the main herbal ingredients. Cinnamon is minorly protective. I tend to like it in magic just as it helps to kind of um, enhance what you're doing and ensure its success. And so that's why we're carrying it. Each of us still had all of the cinnamon sticks we had been carrying, and the only other place where there were cinnamon sticks were in a sealed jar on a high shelf. So Hazel couldn't have even gotten a cinnamon stick if she wanted to. So with all of that understanding, it was just impossible for that to have happened, and seeing it like that felt rather mocking to say the least. And so seeing that, was terrifying and we immediately left the house, got Hazel and went pretty far away to hatch a plan. So we decided that we needed to take that table out of the house and do a large banishing, which we did. And for the first time through this entire process, instead of being afraid, we became brave. And I think that was a powerful difference that we needed. Without even talking, we went back to the house grabbed the table and took it off the property, put it far away. But when we got back, the house felt terrifying. It felt worse than it had felt ever. And it just felt like everything was happening at once. Whatever was in the house knew that we knew and it was not happy about that. But regardless, we began because I was not going to have this thing in my house any longer. It was not welcome. It was not okay. I had kind of been curious if it was something that was just gonna be okay and I was gonna get used to living with it. Did not, it got too freaky and it had to go. So we came back and began the banishing. Every good thorough banishing begins with a thorough cleaning of the house. You have to get rid of the mundane clutter if you wanna get rid of the energetic clutter. We deep cleaned everything, putting away every bit of clutter, organizing the entire house and scrubbing every surface until it was perfectly clean. Then we went through, opened every door, every window, every drawer, closet, cabinet, anything that could open, we opened. In doing this, we made sure that no energy or entity could stay hiding in any nook or cranny. We needed to make sure that everything could get hit by this ritual. So once this space was prepped, we went through ringing a large cowbell and speaking an incantation of sorts that I don't quite remember, but it was stern and direct and very clear of the intent. Ringing a bell in a space is a good way to break up the energy. I don't find that it clears it all away, but it really loosens it from the space. We went through this space, breaking up and loosening this energy. We started from the back of the house and worked all the way to the room that was the worst. And through this, Hazel was at our heels the whole time. Once all the energy had been broken up in this way, we went through burning rosemary. Starting in the back of the house, speaking a sure incantation and burning rosemary, making sure that the smoke hit every piece of that room, starting in the center and circling out, just hitting every nook, every cranny. Rosemary is one of my favorite banishing herbs and I'm very grateful that I had it with me that day. But uh, I think the intent was really what was needed there and the words and really the bells helped to break it up so much. But anyways, went through with the rosemary, speaking the incantation, starting from the back of the house and working all the way to that room. You could feel the spaces clear. You could feel it get lighter behind you as you moved. But when we finally got to the room where the table had been, Hazel again was at our heels the whole way. It shifted. It was very heavy in that room. And Hazel immediately started barking at the corner where the table had been. Right at this moment, the audio cut out on the video for the remainder of talking about this end of the ritual, so I am gonna have to switch to a voiceover. Little spooky, the timing. But anyways, from where we left off, 
Hazel began barking at the corner where the table had been, and then immediately ran out one of the open doors and sat down in the yard, staring into the room. Despite this being a little alarming, we continued through the ritual, working until we got just around the entire room, and right as we were finishing up, Hazel began to follow something as it walked out of the house and towards the water. And right as her eyes met the water, she ran back into the house. And it's at this point that the audio returned. We did that, we closed every window, every door, and put up protections all around. Something I was not going to miss doing this time around. And immediately everything felt lighter. We went through and added back some energy that was better. I think we put a spray that was filled with happy and good energies. And I also began burning simmer pots at this time. But that evening, despite the house feeling much better, outside wasn't exactly the same story. And Hazel began barking out the windows at something that was not there. And at that same time, we started to feel those familiar eyes again. It was certainly no longer in the house and it didn't seem like it could get back in, but it was still on the property and it didn't seem like it wanted to leave anytime soon. <laughs> Cue Olivia, the Witch of Wonderlust, coming to visit. At this point, I felt I was a little in over my head and Olivia, who was far better versed in all of these things than I was or will probably ever be, came out to help me make sure that I could get this thing just away for good. In the days following the banishment, but prior to Olivia getting there, I continued doing minor banishings, burning rosemary every day, filling the space with good things to fill that massive void that was left by this spirit. And we brought the table back to the property. We left it outside under a covered area, I was not ready to bring it back into the house, but I was pretty sure at this point that it was not really the point of the spirit anymore, but I just was not 100% sure and wanted to really clear it out and put up some protections on it before it came into the house again. I did go speak to the people that I bought the table from to see if I could A, return it, and or B, if they had any Thing to tell me about its history. Unfortunately, they had bought it secondhand as well, so I don't really know any of its stories and uh, I was stuck with it. But I did still love it and I was determined to salvage it, which thankfully, with Olivia's help, I was able to do very confidently. Olivia came prepared for anything. She brought a ritual that was exceptionally powerful and one that gave me perhaps one of my more profound experiences in practice. It was electric and you could feel the power radiating around you. And additionally, this was the first time I had ever worked with somebody else in practice. And so that was also just an incredible experience. Now the ritual she brought is not mine to share, but it certainly did the trick and got the rest of whatever was hanging around gone. When she first got to the cabin, she knew immediately what it was and knew that what she had brought was a little too extreme, but we used it anyways. She had dealt with this kind of a spirit before and she called them Watchers, which is a great name for them given how it just was constant eyes on you. Let me just say, not a super fun one to have in your home. But once it was all said and done, I asked the trees on the property to protect the home and the property, and I think they've done a marvelous job of doing that. I brought the table back inside, but not after carving some bind runes into it that should keep it safe till the end of time. And everything was finally at peace. It is a year later now. I still have the table and love it dearly. It is a close part of my practice now and I work on it every single day. There have been a few passing moments where I felt those eyes again, but they're fleeting. It never sticks around, it never comes in the house, and I don't even believe that it actually gets on the property. But overall, it has been fine and good. And ultimately, I am kind of grateful in a strange way for this experience. It has expanded my learnings ex extremely, and I am now very well versed in these kinds of things. I received a lot of criticism when this first happened. I had a lot of people telling me that I should have known better, or uh, that I was lesser for not knowing how to deal with this right away and for making mistakes. But 
honestly. I don't see what's wrong with that. We're not always going to be prepared for every situation we encounter, and I think that's okay. We can do the best that we know how to do in the moment, but honestly, I think it's important just to take moments where you were unsure, to work really hard to learn, and after the fact, make sure it doesn't happen again. You're not gonna be prepared for everything, and that's okay. Just do what you can in the moment. And I feel like that's what I did and ultimately things were okay. And perhaps that's the moral of this story. You don't have to know everything. Do what you can and go forward knowing that your knowledge has grown. And perhaps take these as an opportunity to learn more, which I certainly did and I feel far more confident in myself now and my awarenesses. And uh, there are quite a few things that I will forever do. I will forever keep bells on my doors. I will keep up great protections on my thresholds and oh boy, do I do cleansings and banishments on everything that I purchase secondhand before I bring it home. And so there you go, the story of last year's haunting. I hope you enjoyed and maybe learned a thing or two or just had fun uh, going through a story that is very befitting of this time. If you can and would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share art, book recommendations, herbal profiles, and so much more. I do monthly workshops that you all get to choose, and it's a ton of fun. This month, I believe I am doing something on Samhain, so going over some practices, crafts, recipes, things of that sort. But the workshops are only available for two weeks after they go live, so if you want to catch this one, uh, make sure to get on there early. It will go live on the last Saturday of this month. Also, if you haven't checked out my other channel, I'd recommend going and checking that out. There I share vlogs of my day-to-day -day life, more magic, herbalism, all of that good stuff, and I have a ton of fun there. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are doing well, and I will see you soon.